I call this January 3rd meeting of the Henry County <clears throat> School Board to order. Mrs. Riddle, will you please take the roll? Mr. Offer. Here. Dr. Ball. Here. Mr. Lanigan. Here. Mr. Bradley. Here. Mr. Martin. Here. Dr. Stanbaugh. Here. Mr. Zayer. Here. Good evening and welcome to all our visitors uh, tonight. And our first order of business tonight in our organizational meeting is to um, <coughs> elect a chairman of the school board for the 2019 uh, year. So at this time, I will open the floor for nominations for the chairman for 2019. I'd like to nominate Francis Zare. Second. Okay. A motion has been made and seconded to nominate Mr. Francis Zare for chairman of the school board of Henry County for 2019. Are there any other nominations for chairman? Hearing none, I declare the nominations closed. Those in favor of the motion to accept the nomination of Francis Zayer as the chairman of the school board of Henry County for 2019 signify by raising your right hand. Okay, the motion carries. Uh, Mr. Zayer, you are elected a chairman of the school board of Henry County for 2019. Congratulations, and I will pass the gavel to you. Thank you. I would like to thank my fellow board members for giving me this opportunity. It's truly an honor and a privilege to be chairman for the next year. I promise you I will not let you down. At this time, we'll open up the floor for nominations for vice chairman. I'd like to nominate who I nominated last year, Mr. Alker. Second. Okay, are there any other nominations? Hearing none, uh, declare nominations are closed. All those in favor of Reverend Arker, please raise your right hand. Motion is unanimous. Next, we have appointment of clerk and deputy clerk, Mr. Strayer. Yes, sir. Annually, we also have to uh, elect a, uh, a chairman, I mean, I'm sorry, a clerk for the board and a deputy clerk for the board. Uh, this year, we're recommending Mrs. Leslie Riddle serve as the clerk for the school board and Monica Hatchett continue to serve as a deputy clerk for the school board. What's the pleasure of the board? So moved. Second. Second. <clears throat> Motion by Dr. Stomball, seconded by Reverend Arker. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Motion is unanimous. Next, we have our school board meeting schedule. Yes, sir, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, annually, we also, in the organizational meeting, approve our, year, our meetings that will be held for the year. And we are continuing to follow our schedule that we have this year, where we have meetings at 9 a.m. and meetings at 6 p.m. the first Thursday of every month. I would point out that the meeting in July is the second Thursday of the month uh, based on the Independence Day holiday. Um, so if you do, do not have any questions, I would recommend that you approve the meeting dates and times that are listed on your board pack. So move. Second. Motion by Reverend Arker, seconded by Mr. Martin. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Okay, next we have a superintendent designee, Mr. Strayer. Yes, sir, and annually also approve a designee in, in case they need to attend meetings in my absence or inability to attend a meeting. Uh, Mrs. Milner serves as a designee for signatures in my absence, and today I'm recommending that Mr. David Scott be approved as a designee of the division superintendent for this purpose of attending meetings in my absence. So moved. Second. <clears throat> Motion by Dr. Stomball, seconded by Mrs. Flanagan. All in favor of Mr. Scott, please raise your right hand. That was David Scott now. I'm looking yes. right. 
Okay, next we have adoption of code of conduct for school board members for 2019. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. Since 2003, we have adopted the VSBA code of conduct for school board members at our, at our annual organizational meeting and it's recommended that the board take action tonight on adopting the code of conduct for school board members and that I then send this around and everyone sign the actual code of conduct. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Martin, seconded by Mrs. Flanagan. All in favor of adoption, please raise your right hand. And she's going to pass the sheet down and be sure you all sign it. And Mr. Gravely, if you'd return it to Mr. <coughs> Little. <coughs> okay, next we need approval of the agenda for the regular meeting. So moved. <coughs> Second. Motion by Ms. Flanagan, seconded by Mr. Martin to approve the agenda. All in favor, please raise your right hand. Okay, we have, uh, well, Mrs. Schrader's already welcomed our visitors, and uh, we have an invocation. Uh, Reverend Arker, if you'd please lead us in the invocation, and uh, Mrs. Flanagan, would you lead us in the pledge, please? Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the opportunity we have, I have to come here this evening to uh, be about the business of the schools and to support our students, to work with our students to make this school system the best that it can be. Father, just bless. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Under public comment, Mr. Strader, uh, nobody has signed up that we're aware? No, sir. Okay. Awards and recognition. <coughs> As you know, in December, we recognized several student groups for their achievements. Unfortunately, we were not able to recognize an important group for Magna Vista High School, so we invited them to join us this evening. And tonight, we have with us one member of that organization. So I would like to ask Dorian Green to come forward to have his photo taken with our chairman and our superintendent. Dorian is a member of Magna Vista High School's football team and one of six students who were nominated and elected to the Region 3D All-Region football team. Dorian is a linebacker. Okay, we have information agenda, academic review process. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. I wanted to take a moment to review with you the academic review process. This is a process that schools must go through when they are accredited with conditions or denied. Um, after the process is determined that we will have to go through that, we also have to determine an academic review team, and this team is comprised of members of the school division. And in some instances, the Virginia Department of Education would send a consultant down um, to actually conduct the final review. And so we just found out that we actually would have to go through that. Um, we found that out yesterday as far as actually having a consultant to come down. As you do know that we do have one school that is um, in this situation, and that's Field of Collinsville Middle School. Okay, so when we look at the academic review process, there are three areas of focus. The first one is leadership, next is taught curriculum, and then it's professional development. 
So when we look at instructional leadership, we're looking at the expectations, we're talking about our administrative staff, we're looking at the, the expectations that they have set forth for their teachers and their staff members, as well as how they communicate those expectations, as well as the instruction that takes place in the classrooms, how they monitor the instruction that takes place in the classroom, and then the growth producing feedback that they provide to teachers in, um, based on the observations that they took part in. The next area is the talk curriculum. When we think about the talk curriculum, we're looking at the components of a lesson plan. We're looking at the learning um, objectives. We're looking at the alignment of the standards of learning, making sure that we are aligned, making sure that we're following the pacing, making sure that every classroom is teaching what should be taught according to the Virginia Department of, Ed of Education. And also, when you're looking at the lesson plans, you're actually looking at the classroom period you know, when teachers actually start to teach that lesson, how they hook the students, how they grab their attention, the actual lesson that takes place, and then the closure that takes place within that lesson. Making sure that they use data to drive the instruction, and they're planning for that in the written lesson plans. And making sure that they're following various procedures as well as differentiated instruction. The next uh, portion of the talk curriculum, we're looking at the teacher observation, so that's when the actual administrators have to go into the classrooms and observe, and then based on their observations, the feedback that they give those teachers based on their observations. <coughs> In addition, they also look at, look at the master schedule looking at the actual time in the core content areas as well as transitions in the hallways. They take all of that into consideration. The next area is professional development. And this is just making sure that a uh, continuous needs assessment has been done, meaning they're looking at the individual uh, needs of the staff members and providing professional development to those teachers and to those staff members based on those needs. And so with this process, they actually have to submit a two-year plan, what was done last year as well as what is being planned for this year. Um, so we are currently, again, like I mentioned before, we're going through this with one of our schools. And according to the philosophy of those who have gone through this process before, and according to the Virginia Department of Education, if it's not written, <laughs> it didn't happen. So again, this is a paper audit, and um, that's where we're at. So do you all have any questions for me regarding this process? I am glad that Ms. Milner ended with that statement because that's what I had written down because we have been through this process before and that's exactly what they say over and over is if you know if you don't have a lesson plan we can say this teacher had a great plan and a great delivery but they say where is it written we want to see the lesson plan we want to see the feedback so everything you said that's what they continue to say if it's not written it didn't happen <coughs> so how are we progressing how are we progressing <coughs> with this process right now mm -hmm with our school of choice. Okay, so we're providing a lot of support to that, um, to that school. We actually have our curriculum team that's actually going out monitoring, helping to provide support to the administrative staff. Uh, they're meeting during grade level meetings. They're actually participating during observations and providing feedback. Um, we're actually, we have a team at the division level that's actually going out meeting with the administrative staff, providing support. Um, we actually went to um, myself, Mrs. Um, excuse me, Miss Durham and uh, Miss Perry. We actually went to Roanoke a couple weeks ago to the academic review uh, professional development, and so we came back and we shared all of the information with the administration at Field Oak Collinsville Middle School. And then they have a plan. We've asked them to, to develop a plan, and we're going to help them with that um, on how they would share that to all of their teachers at um, Field Oak Collinsville Middle School. And Miss Milner is a part of one team. And Mr. Minner mm -hmm. and Ms. Penn and Ms. Lewis are a part of another team. So the state requires you to have a central office team and a school based team. Mm -hmm. So we have um, representatives from the district office also attending all of the school improvement meetings <coughs> to provide support. Do we, each of the teachers have a PACE guide? <coughs> yes, that, sir. Okay. Yes, and one of the um, things I'm most proud of uh, this year, which we've done in the past as well as our curriculum staff, they're actually going to the planning meetings with uh, those teachers to help them stay on, on track. When did we last do something similar to this with Field Dale Collins? Or 
Is this done annually if the school is either not accredited or with, with warning? We did it two years ago. We had to go through a similar process. The State Department didn't require this in depth. Um, last year, because the school was reconstituted, they didn't have to do anything. They gave that the school a year to pretty much make a change. And because we're still accredited with conditions, that's why now we're back in academic review. And we did this process at Stanley Town. We did this process at Mount Olivet. Any Camel school Court, that has been Camel Court, Law Park, they've had to do this same process. Magnum and Vista. that's one of the big things is collaboration. And I think we used the example before if I'm teaching government and you're the new teacher. And I just say, okay, well, what you do next is you go over the three branches of government, and that's what you teach. Now, you're a new teacher, and you don't know exactly what to do. So we said when you collaborate and you have those meetings, and our curriculum people are going to those meetings, they say specifically, first, this is your hook activity. Then you introduce this, and then you, and, and they give the new teachers like step by step of the wisdom of, that they have from teaching it over the years. And that's why sometimes you hear teachers push back on collaboration and grade level planning, but it's not supposed to make the job harder, it's supposed to make the job easier by providing that support. But we know that these are things that we're not just saying they have to do, they're requirements from the state. Yes. And we're trying to make them easier by participating and providing the support. It would, it would seem to make sense that even though we have only one school that's going through <coughs> this, that all of the schools are at least aware of what's being checked. Yes, sir. And one in of order to ensure good instruction yes. and supervision is taking place in those schools, and, and yes. I guess what I'm saying is they shouldn't sit back and say, I'm glad we don't have to do this. Right, you're correct. Yeah. Because they actually ask, like when you don't, if you didn't make it this year, they want to see the written documentation from the, the previous year. So if you don't have it, then you're in trouble. Because they'll say, well, show us your lesson plans from last year. And you're like, oh, I didn't keep those. So the schools are aware. Mm -hmm. They've done an excellent job of making sure the schools know, and Mr. Minner and Mr. Erm and Ms. Milner and others. We're still using our lesson plan template correct, <coughs> with certain information already provided, yes. making sure everything is aligned, yes. and then teachers have an option to plug in mm -hmm. their yes. teaching. Okay. And that's one of the things that we looked at when we looked at the format that was developed, you know, with the stage one, mm -hmm. um, depth of knowledge and all that. That's one of the things that they're requiring mm -hmm. within the components of the lesson plans when the State Department looks at it okay. and making sure that we look at those objectives. Mm -hmm. okay. I, I get this is, you know, instruction focused, certainly, but um, one of the primary feedbacks I receive uh, about FC and the question I have is to what extent are disciplinary impacts considered in this process? And we, we have been working on that because we do know that in, if you don't have students there based on absenteeism and if you have students that are out of, the, out of the classroom because of disciplinary actions or you have problems in the classroom and teachers can't teach because of disciplinary problems and they're not being supported, that that is a major issue. So we have also, Ms. We, Milner's been sending. Yes, we verbalized uh, to the administrative staff that we definitely support them and whatever they need to do as far as making sure that there is order so that teachers can teach. And suggestions have been made. Dr. Boone yes. has been to the school and made suggestions on uh, implementations that should occur immediately uh, to support teachers and to make sure that teachers have a conducive environment to teaching. And I would I would concur with what Mr. Martin said. I mean, that is feedback that I get from members of the community about FC. Uh, I realize that's only part of why. I mean, I, it may not even be directly what's measured. Um, for us to be approved the conditions, but that's the, the thing that I hear from the community about our behavioral problems, issues there with behavior and, and things not being done to fix it. And, um, and I have I have a high standard for uh, my expectations for behavior and achievement, and we have let the school know that we want them to have that discussion with the teachers, and we want them to go to each classroom, and we want to tell the students what the expectations are, and that hopefully that started today and that um, as we move forward that we fully support um, them doing, taking the means necessary to make sure the environment is, is peaceful, conducive to teaching, because we, we've heard that same feedback. Especially considering, you know, we are both positively and negatively only having in this condition by one or two students right. on one or two tests. <laughs> 
how much room do we have at CCL in case we need it? Um, well, <laughs> we don't. <laughs> that we have still got some vacancies over there. Well, you know, that's a continuous uh, changing body. I that as, as students I uh, have served time and they, they you know, we're about uh, consequences for actions, but also about cor correcting, you know, bad choices. And as students are there and they come out, there is <coughs> right now, you know, but we do know that there, we have said we might see more suspensions and we may see oh. alternative placements. And we'll, you know, that's why I said Dr. Boone has been over there numerous times and given many suggestions for how to. Right. Do those uh, test results from students at the CCL go back to their home school? Yes, sir, they do. <laughs> so. But I look, I look for those test results from CCL to be wonderful. Um, I'm sure Mrs. Carter's there. The English ones will be excellent. <laughs> That's right. Any other questions from Mrs. Milner? Thank you. Thank you very much. <coughs> will we get a? Will you give us some upgrades, some updates during the course of the year of, of what you were finding and seeing yes, from this group that are there? Thank you. We have the consent agenda. There's three items. Uh, does anybody have any questions on the consent agenda? Move for approval of the consent agenda. Second. The motion by Dr. Duvall, seconded by Reverend Auker. All in favor of the passing the consent agenda as presented, raise your right hand. It's unanimous. Action agenda. We got to approve the high school program studies for 1920. Good evening, Chairman and members of the board. Um, the school board annually approves the high school course offerings by adopting the high school program of studies. The program of studies outlines the course descriptions and general policies about the high school program of instruction. For the 1920 program of studies, there were no changes in the actual course offerings that we're offering here in Henry County, but there are a few changes in some programming that I want to make sure that I highlight and that you're aware of. The first one being that pre-AP will no longer be offered in ninth grade. Pre-AP will begin to be offered in 10th grade and be available to any student interested, but the pre-AP course is offered that a pre-AP course doesn't start um, being offered until 10th grade, and it's only offered if a subsequent AP course is um, offered. Uh, changes were made to reflect the Virginia Code of Standards and uh, Virginia Code and Standards of Accreditation changes in SOL testing, including the use of local verified credits for writing. English course descriptions were updated to reflect the 2017 ELA standards. A detailed listing for Patrick Henry Community College CTE courses were at, was added. Instead of just listing motorsports, we actually list the courses that kids will take so that they'll know. Um, early childhood education and HVAC are no longer offered as dual enrollment um, per PH. That's their decision, but we will continue to offer those courses by Henry County. They just won't be dual enrolled. Um, the procedure for recording a grade after repeating a course has been updated to reflect mastery of content. So students who repeat a class to improve a grade shall only have the highest grade calculated in their GPA. However, all attempts or that course will be indicated <coughs> on their transcript, transcript and remain part of that student's transcript, but the, only the highest grade will be added into their GPA. <coughs> um, annually, we update information regarding program offerings from our educational partners like Patrick Henry and New College and Piedmont Governor School, and we know that some of those agencies are still making some decisions on their programs and their changes. Um, as we receive additional changes from those ent entities, we will make those changes in our program of studies. Included in the attachments that you have um, is a detailed list of each change that was made. There's a final draft reflecting those changes. Once approved, the program of studies will be sent electronically via school messenger. <coughs> Mrs. Hatchett will help us with that, and she'll send it out to all the parents so they'll have it. Paper copies will be available upon request. We have no problem printing that out and giving that to anybody that wants that. Um, currently, we're working on creating short videos to demonstrate the different pathways and programs that we offer at our high school so parents and students are aware of the different programs and the um, various programs of study. Mr. Minner's already done several of those for the Career Academy 
and he's working with Mr. Rodriguez and some teachers in high, at the high school and the Mrs. Atkins and her team to create even more videos to showcase some of those different programs and career pathways that students can um, choose from so they can watch a video. We know our students are more apt to watch something on a quick two, three minute video as opposed to reading something. So we're gonna try to get some videos out there so that um, kids and parents will know specifically what we offered. Um, it's recommended that the board approve the 2019-2020 high school program with studies. There is no physical impact because we send it out um, electronically. Any questions? Questions, comments? Uh, yeah. Go ahead, Mr. Graber. Okay. Well, first, let me <coughs> thank Mr. Durham and the committee. Uh, I did go through the program of studies. <laughs> and uh, so I want to thank you for the work that you've done, making sure everything is aligned and making sure that, you know, parents and students are informed. However, there's one area that, um, and this is something we've talked about in the past, so I just want to <coughs> reemphasize the significance behind, you know, our teacher cadet program. We know that we have a shortage of teachers in the state, in the country. And, you know, it's been my thing, you know, let's, let's really aggressively start to implement programs to grow our own. So with that being said, I would like to see, and I know this is somewhat of a working document and that you've already indicated that there could be some changes, but I'd love to see us aggressively approach strategies and uh, you mentioned videos for CTE program, those types of things to uh, encourage students to get into our teacher cadet program. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just, uh, I think if we can incorporate, again, a more aggressive approach there, uh, I think uh, maybe it would help us in the recruitment and trying to get teachers to our area. Yes, sir. I don't, I don't argue and deny that we have a shortage, and I know Mrs. Landon wouldn't <laughs> either. In our instruction team, we are, we're always trying to recruit folks and trying to get um, some new teachers here in Henry County. And we do offer that early childhood um, CTE course, and in that course, those kids are able to go and do internships and um, observations in our schools, which will kind of help spark an interest, hopefully. And I did, Mrs. Milner and I both have talked to uh, several, the, both of the high school principals at their career fairs or career expos this month, they are going to be trying to highlight those courses that um, early childhood education uh, course and try to get more students involved in that. And I do know, in speaking with Mrs. Landon, that we try to keep our a pulse on those kids that have graduated from Henry County. Where are they? They're in the education program at Farum or places like that and trying to get those kids to come back and work for us. And we have recently hired several um, students, former Henry County students, um, in our positions that we have open. Ms. Landon could probably answer a little bit more about that. But we are, I understand, I hear you, it is a problem that we need to continue working on. And we can grow our own all the better. I'm a product of Henry County. Several people in, in this room are so fantastic. And I think that what Mr. Minner did was starting those um, videos of what the class is all about and the content, some of the things they're doing in the classroom, that he hit a different, um, we've been trying to do it just like the old way of on the paper mm -hmm. and, and, and talking to them, but I think that they are more inclined to watch those short clips that I don't know where that idea came from, but Mr. Minner sent us the first one and ever since then we've been like, oh, we gotta do more of those. So I think having that video for the teacher cadet program and that that will help a lot. Uh, I, I did want to ask um, regarding the PHCC component. You know, I understand you know them deciding not to offer HVAC anymore because we're not offering HVAC period other than through the workforce uh, division. Uh, I'm a little surprised on education just for the simple fact that that and to your point and I'm, I echo. Uh, Education is actually one of our increasing programs. Um, I've actually had to hire more people for the education department to accommodate the students that we've received. So I was just wondering what feedback PHCC offered as to why uh, we don't want to do that dual enrollment. 
basically the, we've been told that no CTE courses would be dual enrolled, and that would be those okay. two. Okay. And I don't know. Um, but they're, it's their budgeting, and we just talk oh, yeah. about what Megan and Colin tell us. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. You might can find out. Yeah, you can go across the hall. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Other questions? Comments? Move for approval of the high school program of studies as presented. Second. Motion by Dr. Duvall, seconded by Mrs. Flanagan. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. It's unanimous. Next, we have the middle school program. Uh, the school board also annually approves the middle school course offerings by adopting the middle school program of studies. The program of studies outlines the course descriptions and general policies about middle school program and instruction. Um, we've reviewed the changes and proposed the 2019-20 school year program of studies for middle school. Same changes that were made in the high school were made in the um, middle school, reflecting the Virginia Code and standard of accreditation changes to SOL testing, using that local verified credit for writing, updating the um, ELA standards to match the 2017 ELA standards. In your attachments, you are also included a, a detailed list of each change that was made and the final draft. Once approved, we'll do the same thing with the middle school that we will do with the high school. We will share this electronically. Mrs. Hatchett will send it out um, through Messenger, and we will provide paper copies upon request. <coughs> It's recommended that the board approve the 2019-2020 middle school program studies. Can Questions, you, comments? Can you uh, maybe expand a little bit on the verified credit for writing? What exactly will that entail? Yes, sir, I'll yeah. try and then I told Mr. Minner to be prepared in case you all had that question as well. But um, part of the code that's changed, we are allowed to have students locally earn that credit, verified credit for writing. They don't have to take an SOL, sit down, take that old fashioned SOL test for writing. But it does um, require quite a bit of work on our English teachers. We do have to keep a portfolio of work um, and evidence for each genre of writing. And we have to collect it in ninth grade, 10th grade, and 11th grade. Um, we have to keep several samples of writing for um, students. And this is brand new for us. We're working through um, this with our teachers and with the state. We have to score it locally. And then we decide, uh, we don't know even the scoring yet. That the state has not told us how you score, when you score, and what's a passing score. Do you have to pass all three? We don't know. But each student starting in the ninth grade has to keep a portfolio of writing and they'll be scored on that locally. And if deemed that they pass that, then that's considered a verified credit and can be used for graduation. It doesn't have to be that old sit down, write to a prompt, one day, one test, and that can decide your graduation. And that's what the state, they heard the cries from the, from the school system saying that yeah. all the other, there's alternate paths, so if you don't pass your history SOL or your you know, other S or your mm -hmm. social science SOL, you could get a local verified credit where we say we know you've mastered the content, you just didn't do well that right. one day on that one test, mm -hmm. but there was no exception for math and there was no exception for writing, you had to pass those tests. And so that's what the state heard, that there needed to be an exception, and this was their rolling out this year of the exception, but there's still a lot of Right, and we weren't able to offer that this year because we just couldn't be prepared. They didn't actually make decisions on this until later mm -hmm. as we started school, yeah, so we like couldn't October. really, yeah, October and November, right. we couldn't yeah. get this year's group of kids in on that. So, but starting with this year's ninth grade cohort, they will not take an SOL test in writing next year. We've started collecting their portfolio, their papers for ninth grade now, so that we can start collecting ninth grade, tenth grade, and eleventh grade, and have a completed portfolio by the end, and we can score those um, and count as their verified writing. So this should be our last group of kids cohort that'll take a test. We might have a few kids that in may take school. the SOL test in high school. In high school, eighth grade test <coughs> is still there, but in high school, we may have a few kids that may take the actual sit-down written SOL test because they didn't pass it and they need to pass it for graduation. We may have a couple of those, but this will be the last year that we'll administer that writing so, test. So is this a credit that every student will earn? <coughs> every sorry. student will earn this credit 
once we establish the guidelines yes. for it. Yes, mm -hmm. this will be it's just the same thing as earning that, passing that SOL test or writing in order to graduate. This is the same thing, just a different way to earn that. And it's a good thing for kids. It's not just one test that decides your future of graduation. So we're excited as an instruction committee and, and as an instruction community that we know that's best for kids. And but it's got a lot of work for us in trying to get it logistically figured out. So we're we're working on it. I think this is a really good change. Uh, students who come up in the technology uh, yes. generation are not used to writing and <laughs> construction and so yeah. constructing a, a written sentence even in some cases. Yeah, we'll still be using the VDOE. They require us to use their rubrics. They have a rubric that we have to grade them on. Um, like I said, I don't know what they have to pass and how, but we still are required to use the same standards and the same rubrics and the same SOLs and curriculum framework. So they'll still be getting the same sort of instruction in writing. Um, and like I said, the eighth grade test, it's not gone, the eighth graders will still take the SOL testing, right? So the eighth grade will take, however, ninth grade started next year. So it's not an option. I mean, they still don't, <coughs> do they have an option to no. take the writing? So we got Watch. to go through this, okay, got right, to do. right, okay. Just the eighth grade got to do the right, okay. Yes, and I don't know if that's gonna, I don't know what the state will do. I don't know if there's been any talk of that. Mr. Minner, might any answers on that one? We have to do it by 21-22 at the high school level. Mm -hmm. But, um, excuse me. At the high school level, we have to move with this test by 21-22. Uh, at the eighth grade level, there's been discussion of changes, but nothing is set in concrete yet. Mm -hmm. Other comments? <laughs> Questions? Well, yeah, I got one. Just <laughs> to piggyback off my comments from the high school, just for the record, I'd like to see maybe in the middle school, too, we have some information in our program of studies about the teacher cadet okay. program. So, yeah. Thank you. Recruit them early and often. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> get them started early, yes. <laughs> Well, it's a pleasure of the board. Uh, motion to approve the uh, middle school uh, course of study is presented. Second. Second. Motion by Dr. Duvall, seconded by Reverend Arker. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. <coughs> motion is unanimous. Next, we have a security surveillance uh, contract. Mr. Scott. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. As we continue to um, focus on our improving our safety and our security in our facilities, we were awarded the uh, school security equipment grant again this year, and this time we were at looking at adding some additional surveillance equipment <coughs> at Mount Olivet Elementary, Rich Acres Elementary, and Stanleytown Elementary. <coughs> security services of Glade Hill, um, Glade Hill, Virginia currently holds an open-end contract with Henry County Schools, and they provided a proposal for adding this surveillance equipment and materials for the above-mentioned schools. Uh, in the amount of not to exceed $31,875, and we would be using RFP number 16-06173-A178. And it's recommended that a contract in the amount of not to exceed $31,875 be awarded to Security Services for adding this additional equipment to the above schools. Is this um, basically video monitoring? Of the of properties, is that what we're looking at? Throughout our schools, yes, yes sir. We have um, surveillance security coverage throughout all of our schools, and so what we look at it each year is how can we increase that coverage, whether it be outside or inside the building as well. Okay. Is this monitored? I mean, yes, sir. So it's actively monitored in, re in real time, or is it something that can, just can only be looked back at? No, sir. It's, it's monitored in real time, both. It can, and it can, it's on a DVR, plus we have it tied in with our network so that others would have access to it if needed and it, it'll play back it keeps data usually up to about 45 days roughly so. the time frame can be implemented very quickly <clears throat> uh, yes sir yeah we would start on it um, they can do this while the students are in school without any interruption and so we'll start on that uh, here in the next couple of months 
in these three schools versus some of our other schools? Well, we, we looked at, we've been adding covers throughout the years yeah. as we've done it. So obviously with our biggest focus on our highs and middles, we started moving into our elementary schools for additional coverage. And we actually, when we apply for the grant, we look at applying for more. This is just what we're rewarded this gotcha. year. <laughs> Hear nothing else, motion to adopt. Second. A motion by Mr. Martin, seconded by Mrs. Flanagan to approve the contract for 31875 All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Motion is unanimous. <clears throat> and now we're considering a long-term contract for A&E on roofing designs. Yes, sir. A request for proposal was issued to establish multi-year term contract renewable for a total of five years for professional architectural and engineering roofing design services. We had six firms responded, and they, they all submitted a proposal for it. The evaluation committee reviewed the proposals <coughs> and interviewed all six firms, and then we ranked them based on criteria that was marked in the RFP, and that took place on December the 14th. As a result of the interviews, Cornette and Cundiff Incorporated of Roanoke was recommended from the committee. So it's recommended that Cornette and Cundiff Incorporated of Roanoke be selected for a term contract for architectural and engineering roofing design services and that the division be authorized to exercise subsequent renewals in accordance with the terms of the contract. Now, they're the company that we've had over the last several years, is that correct? Yes, sir, that's correct. And we haven't had any problems with designs and leaks or anything that, that I know about in the last several years. Well, no, sir. Now, this rain's been challenging us quite a bit. <laughs> but uh, we, we have not had any problems with their design, uh, right. our, our project coming in under budget and that type of thing. So. Any other questions? I think we need some roof work down at Bassett High School from what I can gather. Yeah. In a long time. <clears throat> what, what exactly does physical impact to be determined mean? <laughs> it, it varies depending on the job, yes, sir, and, and depending on what roofing designs that we we're going to do. Uh, their services obviously is affected based on how large the job is. So once it's determined, do we see that figure? Yes, sir, here in just a minute. If you approve this piece, you're going to see it then you're here in just a moment. Yes, sir, and we can break it out. They provide proposals for us that breaks it out for as far as we would like to go with it from the, yeah. from the design and construction all the way through the construction management piece of it um, so that we have a breakout yeah. for it. So this doesn't mean that uh, whatever that figure is, uh, if we approve this, regardless of what the figure is, we've approved it. Oh, no, sir. This is just giving us the permission to use this group for any roofing design services that we need for the next five years. Yes, sir. Right. If you never work them, they earn zero dollars. <coughs> need a motion on this one? Yeah. All right. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Gravely, seconded by Mr. Martin. All in favor, please raise your right hand. Motion is unanimous. Now we're going to get down to part of the Bassett roof. Right, so I didn't know if I was going to have to skip that one or not. So we, uh, <laughs> no, you weren't going to skip that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so as you know, now Bassett High School currently has a built-up coated roof, and the coating roofing piece of it has expired. And when I say that, let me share a little bit of insight. About 10 years ago, we did a coating mm -hmm. throughout that roof to band-aid, if you will, to get us through an, a 10-year warranty, So that because this is a pretty large expense when you look at, mm -hmm. at replacing that entire roof. So with this warranty being expired, and we've had a lot of problems in several areas there, and then we also have had a study done by this group in 2011 and part of our capital improvement plan that we've been working on. The roof at Bassett High School is our next priority. Due to the expense for replacing the entire roof, and thank goodness the way that it's leveled different levels throughout, it allows us to do this in different stages if we need to. So we've elected to look at our priority areas based on our leak history and based on um, our biggest concerns. <coughs> Cornette and Cundiff of Virginia, which now holds an open-end contract with the Division for A&E Roofing Consulting Services, and provided a fee for us uh, for the design, bidding, and construction administration services for three priority areas throughout in the amount of $52,580. Mm -hmm. 
So it's recommended that a contract in this amount of $52,580 be awarded to Cornette and Cundiff for the Design, Bidding, and Construction Administration services for replacement of the priority roof areas identified. Motion to approve. Second. Is there any other discussion? Motion by Dr. Stombaugh, seconded by Mr. Martin. <coughs> All this those is in favor? Just for the design, right? Yes, sir. This is just no for work. The, right. This is for the design and bidding. And so once we get that done, bids will go out on the street, and then I'll bring back prior to the school letting out the uh, the uh, ask for approval for whoever the Cod Lowest contract needs to bid on. Other questions? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Motion is <coughs> unanimous. Uh, move on to superintendent's highlights. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chairman and members of the board, uh, again, we will do our video of the superintendent's highlights for the months and month and after the uh, video, if there are any <coughs> other reports you'd like to pull out, please let me know.
that's the end of the highlight report. And I wanted to point out in the last slide that if you that, that is the unused food that the shared table students take uh, every day when they get the um, items that they don't use, they put on a shared table. And the, Mrs. Hatchett worked with the community to I'll let her talk a little bit about that because I think that's very important. We this is a, this is the first time that's been done. That food was actually what would spoil over break. So what we delivered prior to winter break was what the cafeterias realized they were going to have to throw away. It ended up being two van loads and the back of my car full. <laughs> so we collected from all of the schools and distributed to Grace Network, Salvation Army, and Community Storehouse so that they could turn it around and give it to the community. But as part of that food recovery program, you know, we've already shared with you that United Way helped Grace Network and Salvation Army to get a grant. Each of our schools now has a brand new refrigerator in the cafeteria area separate from the kitchen. And all share table items beginning today that are unopened and unused by students that can be returned to the community will be placed in those refrigerators. I'll be taking the coordinators from Salvation Army and Grace Network to each of the school sites next week. <coughs> They're gonna be labeling those refrigerators with signs so that everyone knows that it's the Grace Network refrigerator or the Salvation Army refrigerator, for example. And they will have volunteers who come to the schools probably once a week, but for some schools it may be more often depending on how much they have left over. And they'll be collecting those items weighing them and reporting that information to Food for the Hungry and Feed America, and then they'll be sharing that with their customers who come in to shop for free in their organization. So we'll be feeding our community with our students' leftovers that would otherwise have gone in the trash. Well, that's wonderful. Now, Dr. Duvall, I know you're <coughs> in the Grace Network. Um, I, I, yeah, I was just, I know when you brought that food, uh, it was a great help, particularly during the time there when uh, for a while we had schools closed and, uh, and Grace Network was not able to operate either and we, we uh, it, was, it was a great benefit and it's a, it's a great program. And we do have uh, volunteers who pick up food from the uh, grocery store so I guess we'll be picking it up from the individual school. That's a major change because in, in the past it had been that everything had to go in the trash because of the regulations. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so it's a big, a big change that everybody worked for to be able to say that we can share that food. Any other questions on the superintendent's report? There's several of them there. Anybody got any questions for our superintendent? <clears throat> That's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we have matters presented by the, by the board. Uh, I'll check with each individual board member personally to make sure I don't miss anybody. Mr. Gravely, we'll start with you. Any matters? Sure, I have several. I won't oh. be long. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, just to bring the board up to date on the traffic light that we're trying to uh, install down by Laurel Park, if you recall at our last meeting, um, Lisa Hughes from VDOT, <clears throat> Uh, present a proposal to put in turning lanes. So we had a, another conversation with her concerning the feasibility of those turning lanes versus traffic lights and then the cost. So she's going back to revisit that. So that's a good thing. And we are working with uh, our uh, Board of Supervisors in that project as well. So. That's not a done deal yet, so she's revisiting, and hopefully we can get some done down there. Okay. Uh, my next is, uh, <clears throat> I'm sure you've probably heard that uh, in the state of Virginia, it was proposed by, uh, I guess, a legislator in Louisa County, uh, the teacher license plates. Um, I hope you're familiar. But anyway, um, I thought it would be nice if we as a board somehow would support that project. Uh, they need at least 450 names uh, by January the 8th uh, in order for the General Assembly to approve uh, teacher uh, license plates and everything. And uh, I, I, th I think it's just you know, good gesture, you know, to show our teachers uh, that we do support and respect the work that they do 
and hopefully if we get it out that we are endorsing this project, then hopefully some of our teachers will sign up to get some of these licensing things. So, uh, do you know how you do? Do you do that through the DMV's site, or how, how do you? show that's all yeah. the same thing they're trying to get 400 450 right. can you do that on the dmv website yeah i guess you just go to the right yeah right the site and i mean that's 11 dollars. i think the cost is like 11 dollars for the uh, plates and everything so you just sign up uh committing that you're going to purchase you know these plates and everything so i thought as a school board if we wanted to i don't know if it requires a resolution or just a commitment that you know, we're in support of this and get it out publicly and encourage our teachers to participate. Well, it's a pleasure of the board. What's the best way of going about this? I, I would I would recommend that we, you know, we have the messenger system that we can send something out to say to teachers. <clears throat> we have an announce email and we just let them all know about it because um, we all we do have that information from, from Louisa County so we could just put mm -hmm. that out to every teacher in an email and let them know because you're right they may not have read that mm -hmm. so hopefully kind of retired people. teachers like you and I Mr. Gravely can get one too yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. That may be the well, I don't think you have to show any proof for anything you can purchase <laughs> any personalized <laughs> plate <laughs> <laughs> That would be the best way and the fastest way to get to most of our, our, our employees. Okay, anything else, Mr. Gravely? I, and my final, uh, just um, to let the board know that <clears throat> uh, an organization that I'm affiliated with, uh, each year we host a Martin Luther King breakfast, and this year it's going to be at NCI, and the emphasis is going to be on education. And if you recall, we were recognized by our school board and system uh, with a project called Q School. So we want to um, honor those schools that have accepted us into their schools to provide some mentoring. So uh, that's going to be at New College. Uh, it's going to be on uh, that Saturday, the 19th of January, if you're interested in attending. Uh, please come out. Uh, we're going to reach out to, again, those schools. And we have about five schools that we have guys to go in to work with kids. So I just wanted to throw it out to the board. Mr. Martin. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, to that point, I want to say uh, thank you to Mrs. Hatchett and uh, thank you to Bassett High School's Beta Club and uh, quite a few of our uh, affiliated organizations for volunteering at um, Blood Drive and Memory Mont, Brenda Riggins last month at Patrick Henry. Uh, we had over four gallons donated. Um, in fact, I know that my donation was sent to Christiansburg, so you know it definitely goes within the area or the surrounding area to help people. Um, of course, uh, my parting joke will be I'm just glad to see that Mr. Auker voted for himself for uh, vice chairman this year as opposed to last year. I was glad to see that uh, you support your own uh, candidacy there. And uh, I think that's it for me. Dr. Steinbaugh. Yeah, I had a question. Um, I know we have a long wish list of things when it comes to facilities and upgrades, but I've been asked um, actually as far back as last year and then again reminded of it this year about tracks um, our track and field tracks around our football stands and the, back, the back story on this as I understand it and maybe <coughs> Keith can fill me in more um, in order to host a region level and state level track event I, I think the VHSO requires a rubberized track which we only have at our what was a high school but now is a middle school and is currently not being maintained for high school competition. So uh, the Laurel Park, high, when it was a high school, had a rubberized track, which I understand is in some disrepair. And so, you know, the ask that I've gotten from some community members is, you know, are we gonna upgrade any of our tracks so that either or any of our high schools can host at a level beyond just our local meets? And then in addition, where is that in our plan for resurfacing, planning ahead, 
obviously those tracks require me. Mr. Scott. And if it's so far down on the list that it's irrelevant, then at least I know where it. And I can sit down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, if that's it. Um, that, you know, I guess to answer your question, let me share a little bit of information with you. The good part is, and I thank you guys for, for the instrumental piece that you played on increasing our capital improvement plan as we move forward. So now with that being said, and we kind of got a little bit more consistency as far as what money is available, we're, we're revising our capital plan coming up this year. And so that will be presented to you for looking at. We'll put a group together to, to look at that. Um, now to answer your other piece of the question, you're right, Laurel Park is the only one we've had. We've had some patchwork. We, we found a company where we can buy some patchwork and put it in there but i've also received a budget price just for taking that up and relaying it, and it's pretty substantial so i'll share that information with miss strayer and she can pass that information along to you on it but i, I will mention to our committee about the um, the resurfacing on that as far as our our track what we've done to this point has just been repainting as needed um, any kind of patchwork that needs to go along with our asphalt track is one of the considerations to change over the high school what are now the two high school tracks or one of the high school tracks just in order to host uh, to be able to even potentially host a regional or state i level haven't had any discussion with anyone about that no sir no sir okay. but but now that you're bringing that to our attention i'll certainly uh, get with mr scott and, and our committee group and we can talk about that and see uh, where we move forward with it so okay and i do want to add that um I've had several parents last year uh, approach me with that as well. Uh, so may maybe the track and field folks are pretty vocal. But, um, and I mentioned that to Dr. Cotton and uh, I know Ms. Strayer is aware. So I just wanted to reiterate that I've also heard the same. Thank you. Mrs. Flanagan. I just want to appreciate, uh, say that how much we appreciate our teachers and administrators and hope you had a wonderful, wonderful holiday and some time off to recharge. And, and we're going to have a, a great second half of the year. And we do appreciate you very much. <laughs> okay, I noticed that the, uh, a while back we asked VDOT to do a safety study at Drury Mason Middle School. And it took some time, but the PSA had to move the water lines, and they did increase the deacceleration lane, which would be a big help. So I think it'd be appropriate if Ms. Stray would write a letter to Lisa Price Hughes, thanking her for her help and asking her what we can do in the future to even make it safer yet, other things that we can do. Okay, I can take care of that. Thank you. Reverend Auker. Well, I would. I appreciate the work that you all did for the high school curriculum and the middle school curriculum. I think it's great and I support it. And yes, I did vote for myself. <laughs> <clears throat> you abstained last year. I just want to. I did. Yeah. But I was afraid Joe wasn't going to vote for me, so I figured <laughs> I better vote. <laughs> uh, that's all I have. Dr. DeVault. No, sir, I don't have anything to add. <laughs> okay. Uh, we next meeting uh, we have a conference coming up uh, January the 15th in <clears throat> Richmond we'll talk to our legislators and hopefully you folks out there are letting them know your feelings we need all the help we can get uh, anything special about the meetings coming up Mr. Rare? I would point out that uh, just a reminder that that joint work session is in February but we'll have another meeting before that right Okay, we have a work session coming up that's going to be upstairs in the school board meeting room. It's open to the public, so we'll uh, take a 10-minute break and head upstairs.